This video is for the busy fish keeper, or even the lazy one. Five time-saving hacks that every fish keeper should know. Here we go. Whatever type of fish keeper you are, you want to spend more time in front of your tanks enjoying them and less time working on them. Especially in the summer when the weather is beautiful, who wants to be stuck inside working on their fish tanks? I mean, besides weirdos like me. So I'm going to give you the five time-saving hacks that have saved me all kinds of time, and I'll even give you one bonus one at the end of the video, so stick around. I buy expensive fish food, and I don't like it getting sucked up in the filters when I feed them. So I used to just unplug the filters every time I fed them, but that got to be a pain in the butt, and pretty soon I'd be like, well, maybe I'll just skip it this time, and pretty soon, just skip it for an entire week, or maybe even longer. I also don't like turning on and off the lights, but there's a simple solution that you might be interested to hear about. Unplugging filters might seem like a first world problem, but it can sure be irritating after a while, and why waste the time and effort? Like I said, I don't want to have my expensive food sucked into the intakes. There she goes. So turning them off is a must for me. I'd much rather just open up my phone and turn them off there. We're usually on our phones anyway, right? Amen to that. No reaching behind or into the aquarium stands and messing with all those cords. So I use smart outlets that allow me to do just that. This is one smart controller for one input, but you can buy others that have more inputs or even a strip. Simple power button and just plug it in. You have to get the app for whichever brand you use, and it'll take a one-time setup, but that was super easy with my Govee outlets. Link is in the description for those. When I want to turn them on and off, I just open up the app, find the filter or other equipment I want to turn on or off, and give it a tap. Done. You can even set them on a timer, so if you feed your fish every day, you could just set them to turn on and off at, say, 5 p.m. and 5.05 p.m. Be careful with this though, I've had my timer feature fail before, so at least with these outlets, I don't have anything that could be life-threatening using the timer function. I have these smart aquarium lights too that turn on and off by themselves, and you can do that manually also, but I never do. But if you don't have smart lights, this is a great way to stop worrying about when to turn your lights on and off, and stop wasting even the little bit of time it takes to do so manually. It all adds up. Just remember that when you turn the filters off, make sure you turn them back on. Hey, and speaking of turning things on, if I've turned you onto this channel, then make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons, and more importantly, leave a comment. Hey, do you like doing gravel vacs? I don't, so I don't do them anymore. What? Well, at least not in this tank, and there's a simple reason why. Getting all that filthy detritus off the bottom of your tank is really important. Left alone, it starts to decay, which you probably know turns to ammonia and then eventually nitrates. And the reason we do water changes is because it's one of the only ways to reduce those nitrates. We'll get to the other way later. So we have to get rid of it, which also keeps your tank from looking disgusting. The most obvious way to get it out is with a siphon. Unfortunately, this method sucks. Get it? Ooh! Hey, I only made that terrible dad joke so I could use my boo track. Anyway, it takes a lot of time and only very strange people like to do it. For this reason, let me ask you. Do you have fish that like strong current? If the answer is yes, then try adding a couple of wave makers. In Alcatraz, my African cichlid tank, I have a powerful one at the top of my tank where the filter intakes are. It blows the water across the top to the other side, where it then goes down and meets my less powerful wave maker that keeps the current loop going along the bottom of the tank back the other way. That pushes all the garbage to the intakes. It's so brilliant, I can't believe I thought of it all myself. Hi, liar! This will save you all kinds of time and misery. If you don't or can't have wave makers, then I hope you can somehow enjoy your life of torture. Just remember you can't use wave makers this way in every tank. If I were to do this in my Angelfish and Geo tank, they'd probably go crazy because they don't like all the current. If you have a larger tank and you're still using buckets to change your water, then you need to switch right away to either a Python system or even better, a submersible pump. A python system is basically a siphon and long hose with a special connector at the end of the hose that allows you to hook it up to your faucet. You have to run the faucet, which creates a suction while draining your tank. This works better than using a siphon and bucket and will save you time and back problems, but it wastes water and isn't so fast as a good submersible pump and hose. What you're looking at here is the one I use, the CJ Ultra Zero. It feels like a really well-made heavy-duty pump and it gets the job done in a hurry. I either hook up a 5 8 inch hose for my 75 gallon tank or speed up the process by hooking up an inch diameter hose for my larger tanks. I firmly attach the open end to a plastic container in the tub, then drop that baby in the tank, give it some power, and off she goes. 
I can drain this 240 gallon tank to about 20% in 20 minutes. That's still way too fast. It takes a bit longer to fill it back up because of the head pressure from pushing water back up to the tank instead of down to the tub. Still fast though. Oh yeah. You will know what to do with all your free time once you ditch your buckets and pump like a pro. And your back will buy you something nice for saving it from pain and misery. Just remember that if you're using a pump to change your water, then you need to keep an eye on it. Don't get distracted or you might end up with a flood that's gonna wreck your home. Ask me how I know that one. I love watching my fish, but when I'm not watching them, this light pretty much stays off. This next hack is so simple and easy. You may think that your fish need light to enjoy life, but this isn't true. So I only have my light on this tank on for about six hours a day. Same with my Angel Fish and Geo tank. And I only have it on when I'm home. So if I go on vacation, I just leave it off. And the reason is, is because first of all, causes more stress for your fish to have the light on, but also it feeds algae. Light is their primary food source. So if you turn that light off, you're decreasing the amount of food that you're giving the algae, and then you're spending less time scrubbing the glass. On top of this, you can also add snails to your tank. Now I'm not talking about the snails that reproduce and then you put one in and you have 100,000 of them in your tank. I'm talking about nerite snails, and they don't reproduce at all in freshwater tanks. Most people are surprised to hear that. You put one in, you're just gonna have one, unless they escape, like mine did. They'll get out of the tank any way they can, and then they'll crawl down the tank, and then they'll crawl along the floor where they'll die. So you wanna make sure that you keep an eye on them and make sure they don't escape, but they're going to eat a lot of algae. I found these guys better at scrubbing the glass than plecos, and they don't produce nearly as much waste. Along those same lines, there's something else you can do to reduce the amount of time you're spending doing water changes. Now, unless you're like me, where you practically look at a plant and you've already signed its death warrant, Hit me. then you might consider having a planted tank. Plants love carbon dioxide and nitrates. They'll just eat them up. If you're looking for a way to save time on water changes, then this is a great way to do it. The more plants you have, the better off your tank will be, as long as there's enough room for the fish to swim around in. They'll drop those nitrates right down, and high nitrates are the main reason we do water changes. Of course, we also replenish minerals when we do water changes, so you'll need to keep that in mind. You'll want to get a light made for planted aquariums to give them the proper light they need, and you'll need to leave the light on enough for the plants you choose. Some plants need more light than others. African cichlids eat plants, so I keep some pothos on top of the tank with the roots dangling into the water in protective mesh bags. So leaving that light on may increase the amount of algae that you have in your tank, but that brings me back to nerite snails. So that's five, right? Well, it seems like five. So this is your bonus hack, and it's awesome because you can use it in every aspect of your life. This will save you so much time and money. When you need something for your aquarium, do your research, read the reviews, and spend the money to get what you want. Don't cheap out, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the almost right version, you're gonna install it in your tank, and then it's not gonna be quite what you wanted, which means you're gonna do all your research again probably if you're like me because you don't remember what you found out the first time, wasting time, you're gonna have to read the reviews again, order what you want, spending more money, and then wait for it to arrive, and then uninstall and install the new equipment. A total waste of time and money, just look what you want, if you can't afford it now, wait and then get it when you can afford it. All right, hopefully these hacks will save you some time and give you your life back. Let me know if you'd like to see another video with more of these hacks and also what do you do to save time when you're keeping your fish. You've been watching The Cichlid Charmer and as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Hey, by the way, what do you think about the algae on these standing logs in my Angel Geo tank? Should I keep it or wipe it away? Let me know.